thought for the day with Sutton Team Ministry on Wednesday the 3rd of February. We are continuing with the series of interviews with women from the Bible to find out if they have anything to say to us today. Using the amazing technology we imagine could be developed, John is going to interview Sarah, Abraham's wife. We read about her in Genesis chapters 12 to 23. So over to John in the studio. Welcome to today's Interesting Women from Bible Times. I have with me in the studio Sarah, Abraham's wife. Sarah, tell us about your early life. I believe you initially lived in Ur, what we now call Iraq. What was it like? Ur was a prosperous city. There was always plenty to eat, clothes to wear and lots to do. I was surrounded by family and friends and we had a good social life. My parents called me Sarai or Sarah, which means princess. I knew I'd been born with the gift of great beauty because everyone told me so. Why did you leave Ur? <clears throat> I married Abraham a man of great faith. It was a very exciting time for me. We were young and anticipated that we would soon start a family. When Abraham told me that God had told him to leave Ur and go to a land that he would show him, I was rather upset. We had a good life, but I loved Abraham and it was my duty to go with him wherever he, he went. So we went to Canaan with a whole entourage of family, friends, servants and possessions. So did you find another good place to settle? No, it was terrible. We first went to Canaan and then a great famine struck the land, so we had to move on to Egypt. We read that your time in Egypt was a difficult time for you. Didn't Abraham tell you to pretend to be his sister? so that Pharaoh would not kill him? Well, yes, that did happen. Abraham was worried because of my beautiful looks. He thought that he would be killed. I was anxious about the whole idea. What would happen to me? Would I lose the husband I loved? Was the thought of a family not going to happen? Was Adam's faith in God worthwhile? So uh, Abraham said I was his sister. In a way, it wasn't a total lie. I was a relative, but perhaps that was twist, twisting the truth somewhat. Anyway, I went along with it. Pharaoh wanted me as a wife. And when he found out who I really was, he, we all had to leave Egypt. Then I began to realise that God was actually in charge of what happened to us. He would look after us. My faith in Abraham's God began to grow. Perhaps we would even have a child soon. But we read in the Bible that you didn't start a family while you were young. Do you think all that travelling, uncertainty and anxiety was the reason? Probably not. We were expecting that I would become pregnant at any time, but it never seemed to happen. God kept promising Abraham that he would have a son and that he would be the ancestor of a great nation and be greatly blessed. We had to keep believing that and have faith in God's promise. We also read that it was your idea that your maidservant should bear Abraham a child. Why was that? We waited and waited, but I never became pregnant. I was giving up and not as sure of God's promise as I had been. We were both getting the older and the child God promised had not come. I reasoned that as my maidservant was in effect my property, then any child she gave birth to would become like mine. But it didn't turn out like that. Hagar despised me when she became pregnant. Abraham told me to deal with the situation myself. 
so I treated her badly and she ran away. I was feeling so resentful and envious of Hagar and the whole episode is not one I'm proud of. She was a woman just like me but not so fortunate in life. But God met her and told her to return to me. Did you feel God was angry with you for that episode? I was very sorry for suggesting that Hagar should be involved in our problem and I had to live with the consequences of that. However, I believe God forgave me because he can continued to promise that we would have a son. He even told us that we were to call him Isaac. By now, I was 90 and Abraham was 100. Abraham just laughed. We read that you too heard the promise this time from three visitors, wasn't it? Yes, that was a strange occurrence. One day, three men visited Abraham. He acted in the polite and hospitable way our race do. I made a meal for them. As the three men were eating, they asked specifically about me, which was rather strange. I listened to what they had to say. They told Abraham that in a year's time, I would give birth to a son. Well, I ask you, after all that time and our ages, I just laughed. One of them obviously heard me laughing and reminded us both that nothing is too hard for God. We believe the three men were angels, messengers of God sent with that message for us. And they were right, weren't they? You did give birth to a son, Isaac. Yes, at last, God's promise came to fruition. I gave birth to our lovely son, Isaac. Despite my age, God had blessed me and given me the strength and life to care for this baby and bring him up to manhood. The long wait for God's promise to be fulfilled was worth every minute. Looking back over your life, Sarah, the ups and downs you had, what would you say you learnt about God? Over 127 years, one can learn a great deal. As I look back over my early life, I can see that while it's great to have a pleasant, easy life, when things get harder, it doesn't mean that God has abandoned us. It doesn't mean he's forgotten us. He has a plan for us and will guide us and look after us if we trust in him. We can take much from that at the moment. We are living through a worldwide pandemic that we are having difficulty in getting under control, even with our advanced scientific knowledge. Here in the 21st century, we also need to remember that God has not abandoned us. He is there for us, ensuring us that the knowledge he has empowered us to gain will eventually overcome this current predicament we are in. What else would you say you have learned, Sarah? I learned that God is faithful and forgiving. I made mistakes in my life, but God remained faithful to me and kept his promise of a son. For my part, I had to keep faithful to him for a very long time before his promise was realised. After all, God knows our deepest needs and longings and will do what be is best for us. He keeps his promises. And that is true for us today as well. He knows what we need to get through this pandemic and he has given us the means to do it. What we have, learned, have to learn is how to use all we have, how to care for each other, how to share what we have. Sometimes that is between friends and neighbours and the local community. Sometimes it means sharing among nations and working together to the benefit of people, whatever their disadvantages, race or political situation. Is there anything else you have learned? 
Yes, I've learnt that God's time is always the right time. I wanted a child when I was young and fit, but God had a different plan. We have to learn to be patient for God's appointed time. Perhaps that too is something we need to bear in mind today. We might wonder why God isn't doing more to combat this coronavirus. On the other hand, perhaps there is much we need to learn about our world and working together in it first. We are having to look at so many issues at the moment, how we treat the planet, how we treat each other, how we work together rather than on our own, how we respond to authority, how to put ourselves and our wishes second, and probably much more too. Was there anything else you wanted to say, Sarah? I think perhaps the greatest thing I learned in my life was that nothing is impossible for God. He created the world and everything in it. It is his, and he will not abandon the people he has created to live in it. Well, thank you, Sarah, for sharing with us today some of the things you learnt from your life so long ago. We may be able to apply your thoughts to our own lives. And thank you for being with us. Let us pray to our faithful and loving God. Heavenly Father, we praise you that for you nothing is impossible. Grant us patience as we wait for your timing in our lives. At this time, we particularly ask for patience as we await the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. You know how difficult it is for us to be patient as we long for a return to the lives we enjoyed before the virus struck. Grant us patience with those who doubt the authenticity of the pandemic, for patience with those who find it difficult to abide by the advice and restrictions imposed on us, for patience as decisions are made regarding the administration of vaccines and the easing of restrictions. Heavenly Father, you know each one of us. You know our deepest needs and our deepest longings. You know our failings. You know our wrongdoings. Yet every time we seek your forgiveness, you are there for us helping us along the way again. Help our faith to grow as we travel through life, learning from each experience, whether pleasant or hard to bear. We praise you for the good we have received over the last ten months and more. Help us to see where you have been at work in our lives, enabling us to cope with all we find difficult. We praise you for the difficult times we've been through, knowing that you were always with us, even in the darkest times. Let us spend a moment thanking God in our hearts for the blessings we have received this week. Let us bring to mind the times we have let God down in our lives this week. May Almighty God forgive us these transgressions and show us mercy. Let us bring to God our petitions and concerns for our own lives, for those we love and care about, for those who need God's presence with them at this time. May God bless us, that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. Amen. Amen.